Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for watching this video. Today's video, we're going to take a look at the best overall Linux distributions for 2023 that I deemed are good. Now, this isn't anything that's, you know, target specific as far as a ranking order or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. All right, so the first one we're going to take a look at today is Linux Mint. Now, Linux Mint is probably the most entry-level overall Linux distribution out there. And truthfully, rightfully so. What makes Linux Mint so overall friendly is that it is probably one of the best distributions for beginner Linux users, or even people who just want to simplify their use of Linux easily, they can do that with Linux Mint. Now there's two derivatives of it. There is a regular Linux Mint. It's the Ubuntu based one that is in the community area of Ubuntu. And then you actually have the LMDE, which is Debian edition, which is at their, at, on their page too, that you can download. But either way, Linux Mint is very stable, very popular. It's easy. Now, the Cinnamon desktop is a look and feel of like the old Windows. People say like 95, 98, you know, 97, Windows 7 look to me. But it's so light on resource. And that's literally one of the main reasons why a lot of people like it. It just gets out of your way quickly. It's a great starting point for beginners. And it's got immense stability because it's, you know, based off of two stable Linux distri distributions. You know, the system requirements are very light as well. It only requires two gigs of RAM, 20 gigs of hard drive space, and just a dual core CPU. So, I mean, you could throw it on pretty much any potato laptop out there and be running away and doing things on your computer as if it was a brand new computer because it's so lightweight and so good and that is one of the reasons why it is one of the greatest overall distributions that you could actually use so then the next one we're going to look at is zorin os ah zorin you know i think when i first tried zorin for the first time what impressed me was the layout switcher which they rope you with it by letting you see it for a minute, you know, for like four of them. And, and then they put the rest of the fully more cooler ones behind a paywall. That's not a bad knock. That was a lot of hard work in creating that. And so I'm not knocking on it, but there's many more that you could unlock with the pro edition. Now, one of the greatest appeals that, Zorin has is that Zorin is the probably I would say the number one distribution that most new to Linux from Windows users go to and it's because the UI that I just talked about is so appealing in fact it actually attracts some Mac users like elementary OS did because it actually has a switcher a desktop that you could lay out that you could actually switch it is just like mac so it makes them jump very easily and feel right at home right away now zorn os like i said has the pro version that is i think like 40 at the time i think it was like 20 bucks last time i used it 25 maybe and maybe up to 40 now i, I i'm not sure but it, it has a pro version, which unlocks a lot of stuff, you know, and it actually comes with in the pro version. It comes with the more more customized layouts. And then also it has GIMP and Blender already loaded out of the box. And you could also share your keyboard and mouse across computers. So th there are some benefits to the paid version. But in my opinion, not a lot. You could always install GIMP or Blender on your own. A everything that, that you get in the pre in the pro version, you can actually install and make and do yourself on Zorin OS. It's based off of Ubuntu, but it, but it doesn't feel anything like Ubuntu. So you're kind of using Ubuntu without really using Ubuntu, and it's because it's, it, it, it just doesn't even feel like Ubuntu. I mean, just go try it. Go check it out. Tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below. All right, so we're going to move on to the next one, and the next one is Solace OS. Now, Solace OS is an independent distribution that is made independently from all of the other Linux distributions. It actually uses the Budgie desktop, which based off of GNOME, but it's 
doesn't feel like gnome really and if you don't like the budget desktop some people just don't like it you, you know it's got gnome available regular standard gnome available there's plasma and mate so you can always switch to those it uses the eopkg file manager for for a packaging system which is very it's got a very shallow it's like apt or whatever i mean the syntax is, is pretty much the same and what's interesting is that it focuses a lot on developers gamers and content creators but it's so easy to use it's very friendly back in the day i used it for a minute and i enjoyed it completely in fact i, I loved the desktop environment at the time it was it was it was pretty pretty appealing but you know i've since left the desktop environment but it's definitely one that that i would recommend to people to use all the time it's also kind of in the in between of being a semi-resource intensive but also lightweight distribution i mean it, it it only requires 40 gigs of hard drive space and 8 gigs of ram and a 2 gigahertz dual core 64-bit cpu will run it just fine so like i said it, it's kind of like a middle of the road resource intensive type distribution uh, you know it's got a very slow development pace for a while there it went a long time without being developed in any way shape or form to the extent that people were thinking that it was actually almost dead <laughs> a dead project but then it kind of came back now another con is is that it it's software repos are kind of light out of all the distributions that i've looked at it, it's on the lighter end of things but that's not a problem these days because as with every other linux distribution out there you can always use app images, flat packs, or snaps. One of those is going to work on it. And both snaps and flat packs are able to be used on Solace. So you don't have to necessarily worry about the lack of repos. And in a way, that's been a saving grace for a lot of distributions are the flat packs and snaps. Now, some people aren't fans of snaps, some people aren't fans of flat packs, and some people aren't fans of any of those type of things. But Either way, sometimes you got to do what you got to do just to get by. And so in this situation with Linux, uh, Solace OS, that's kind of what you got to do to get by with them. So that being said, you know, just know that about Solace. But it is definitely one that I can recommend with a lot of strength and a lot of them and a lot of vigor. So, yeah, give that a try. And then, of course, the last one on today's list. It shouldn't be a big surprise for an overall distro because it's pretty much so the one that brought everybody to Linux and became the most popular distribution and made Linux absolutely easy to try and swallow as a pill and use because it really simplified it from the very beginning. They're the ones that have started this whole trend of making Linux easy for everybody. That was exactly what Ubuntu did for Linux decades ago. Back in the day when it was RTFM Kid and everything was pretty much so TUI or terminal based, there was very few GUIs in, involved or desktop environments at all. So it was basically GNOME with the KDE, or I'm sorry, GNOME and KDE back then with Fedora and Ubuntu. Ubuntu had GNOME. That's what it was. Well, Ubuntu has taken it a lot further these days. There's so many spins, there's so many different derivatives of it because it became so popular that. That's why it has to be, in my mind's eye, the number one best overall Linux distribution out there. And it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't even be questioned, really. I mean, they have a spin for pretty much every kind of flavor that you want, every kind of, you know, like server that you want, every kind of container that you want. I mean, their snaps packages handle everything. Plus, they have the PPAs and they are based off of Debian which is a very stable platform and they are a stable platform even though they're based off of it they're still stable in their development canonical but that's the other the, the con is that a lot of people don't like about ubuntu is that they are proprietary so to speak because they are you know corporate owned and well but they don't keep things super private behind you know closed doors they they've released some stuff and well it's just overall a decent it has applications for everything you know you, that you want uh, you know in, in fact it popularized popularized a lot of apps out there so really in the end i mean it has to be the number one overall distribution there isn't a whole lot i can't tell you about ubuntu that you probably don't already know i mean in 
honestly speaking, I don't know of anybody that has remotely ever heard of Linux. That you go up and say, hey, Linux, and, the, you know, I'm a Linux user. And be like, oh, oh, yeah, I heard about Linux, Ubuntu, that's it, you know, I, I'm, or they've tried Ubuntu and then they had a, a, whatever experience with it. They didn't like it. And they left. But they will say that they literally knew about Ubuntu. It's that popular. So the pros, definitely it's beginner friendly and user friendly. And it's very customizable to a degree with GNOME extension, that kind of stuff. Or if you download one of the spins that are, you know, like KDE and all that good stuff, then it's, yeah, it's customizable as well. Cons are, you know, that snaps are kind of slow and that there isn't any flax flat pack support so you can't get flat packs on it which it's understandable considering literally they are the developers of snaps and they would want you to use their snaps only on their system so i get that one and snaps arguably people historically have argued that they're slow to me even when they were slow they aren't they weren't that slow for me but for some people they were still super slow but they've gotten better too also over the course of time so they're doing a lot better in fact slap packs flat packs slap packs woo Word faux pas, but flat packs are now starting to kind of like have issues of their own. So there's that argument, but I'm not into that in here. Other thing is it requires a pretty decent PC to run really smoothly. The system requirements for it are like four gigs of RAM, 25 gigs of hard hard drive space, and a dual dual core, at least two gigahertz processor, 64 bit. So, and the flavors that they have that they support are KDE Plasma, GNOME, Cinnamon, Budgie, Kalen, Studio, Unity is now back, and XFCE, Mate, and LXQT. So that is a look at the best overall Linux distributions of 2023 in my eyes. I would argue that the best one on there over the overall ones for user friendliness would be Zorin, and then Solus would be the second one. That I, that's how I'd rank them. Or arguably, you could interchange them out between one and two. Yeah, you could. So if you haven't tried either one of those two, zip on over to their download page, give them a try, tell me what you think. If you have tried any of these, I mean, you had issues, comment what the issue was and what the fix was. And not, I'd hopped type fix, but you know, this is what fixed it with whatever it is that you did to actually fix it and continue using it. If you have it and you plan on trying it, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Also report back with your feedback. I greatly look forward to that it you know i find that exciting you know that you know you have a good time or even if you do have a bad time i don't find it exciting but that you know you had a time with something that i recommended and so i will leave you with that so don't forget to thumbs up and until then y'all keep doing what you do keep on linuxing stay safe stay blessed and have a great day and above all i will see you in the very next one Oh, 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 oh,